<laughs> all right, it's October. I got all the boys out. It's time to get started on painting. Let's see, what should I paint? What should I paint? What I, mean? I feel like there's something missing from my army. What could it, what could it possibly be? Oh. Whoa, oh, I got old Big Mac. This is Dread Ones Go Faster. You're not old Big Mac, you're little Mac. I'm old Big Mac. <laughs> Welcome back to the Red Ones Go Faster. I am indeed old Big Mac, and this is a little Big Mac. And uh, there's one thing that's very obviously missing from my org army after watching yesterday's video, and that is old Big Mac doesn't actually have a Big Mac in the army. Other than the shock attack gun. I do have the old school shock attack gun and metal, but, uh, you know, we need a Mac that can actually, you know, fix some gubbins. So I think it's high time we get this guy painted. Let's get into it. All right, so what we have here is the classic Big Mech in Mega Armor from the Mega Armor Knobs set. And you can see I actually have my Mega Armor Knobs out, and there's a reason for that. See, when I built these guys, it was all about rule of cool, and, you know, dual kill saws is very, very cool. Now, however, in 10th edition, dual kill saws really aren't that great in game. The other problem I did is I made a couple with dual claws. Now, they do look freaking amazing, but this has never been a legal loadout, and I'm kind of an idiot. So what I want to do is actually fix this squad up to uh, to be correct. And then you'll also notice that uh, you know most of these guys have their big iron gobs like they're supposed to, the big things here on the front. Um, but this guy, he doesn't have anything. So I think I'm going to do a two for one here. I've got my squad of five that's done, and I know, I know what you're saying. Big Mac, you've got 8,000 points of orcs not painted. Why on earth would you start with a completed squad and break it apart? But, again, we need to make them game ready. This squad is not game legal by any stretch of the imagination, and frankly, I think we can get there pretty easily. The other thing is, by making the big mech, I also have this metal guy here that I can add to the squad, and what I can do is actually use the parts from the Mega Knob kit, because they give you two of the things for the big mechs. I can make the big mech in Mega Armor, which is this guy, and the big mech with the, uh, the force field generator. So I'm gonna build up that force field generator, and I think I'm going to pop uh, this guy's head off and put the other Big Mac head on him and turn him into the Big Mac with Force Field Generator. And then get this guy up to snuff as a regular Mega Armor Knob. Uh, take care of Double Claw guy here to not be Double Claws. And yeah, just kind of get these guys set up to be an actual useful squad. The other thing is these kits are actually really well designed to be able to do multiple weapons, right? They either have a peg or a hole and then you can put the arms in as you see fit. And so I'm actually gonna paint up a couple of arms for the Big Mac here. The problem is I got these particular guys used and they were already half assembled and most of their arms were complete garbage. So I actually only have one that is ready to go with an arm. I do, however, have some extra arms uh, on the sprues. So maybe I can actually fix some of that, put some new wrist joints on them. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna get to doing some clipping and we'll get into it. And when you clip stuff off the sprue, you often end up with little pieces of nub like this right here that actually affect bolting the model together. So it's always good to get a nice sharp knife and uh, get rid of those. Now, again, my preferred glue for anything plastic is the Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. What makes it so good is the capillary action. What that means is you can actually dry fit the parts together and then you take the glue that's so thin and you put it on the join and it flows into the joint of its own accord instead of having to put it in between and just like that it is glued and nice without a whole bunch of drama uh, I've got a link in the description below for this stuff I can't recommend it enough it really makes your building much cleaner
All right, so I got the custom force field built, and how that's supposed to go is it goes on top of the mega knob like that to turn it into the big mech with custom force field. Uh, so I got to cut the uh, back banner off of one of these guys. Let's see, where is he? This is the one uh, that I was going to use since he had the head. He's also got that other claw arm that I really got to take off. So now I got to dissect him. Well, let's see how it goes. Well, that's embarrassing. I just went and checked the. Uh data cards in the index for uh, 40k for the orcs for 10th edition uh, to check out weapons for this guy before I really started chopping and um, the big mech with custom force field is not in mega armor and the big mech in mega armor now always comes with a custom force field so I can either build two big mechs in mega armor which you can run nowadays in 10th edition um, or I could just build another mega knob and have six mega knobs in my squad which I believe is the maximum size I think I might actually do the six mega knob because you can only attach this guy to mega knobs. That's it. And I've got the uh, mega armor war boss. It can also only attach to mega knobs. So really, I'll, I'll end up with like two squads of three that I could use with these two attachments, um, or attach just one of them to one squad depending on what game I'm playing. I really can't ever see playing with two mega armor uh, equipped. Uh, big mechs in one game, which means I've got a custom force field uh, that I can use on a regular big mech um, to make a big mech with custom force field. I don't know uh, how I feel about that one. That unit doesn't seem all that great. Um, but yeah, so anyways, we're going to abandon this, <laughs> even though I just did all that work. Uh, but that's okay, because I think we can actually use this. Um, I'm missing the custom force field uh, generator for my um, Gorkonaut. Or Gorkonaut. Um, so maybe I'll just use it for that. So we'll put that aside. I'm going to finish him off as the big mech. Um, I, so I need to build the custom mega blaster for his arm as well as the um, uh, custom shooter. The combi weapons are just kind of garbage these days. Um, and the uh, the short range one, uh, the like custom force field shooter only has a 12 inch range with one shot. like. And he only hits on a 5-up. That's useless. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to do that. But then also on his other arm, you can either give him the Power Claw or the uh, Kill Saw. And it um, can go back and forth. So the Kill Saw only, unfortunately, comes with the holes. And the Claw comes with the Peg. So I'm going to have to figure out how to put a Peg into one of the uh, Kill Saws if I want to be able to swap back and forth on him. Uh, but, yeah, so that's what we're going to do for him. Uh, which means this guy's just going to become a regular uh, Mega Armor knob. And, and again, I've got, I've got all the weapons. And so I think what I'm going to do is actually build uh, a couple of the blasters for them. Um, I might keep one or two of the double saw guys as a double saw just because they're, they're, they're still cool, even if they're not great. Um, but yeah, the Power Claw guys can't be double Power Claws, so get them all fixed up. All right, so rather than rip his head off, because I do actually like the design of the head, I ended up just modifying the iron gob, uh, cut the uh, rivet off of one side and cut his wires off of the side so that the iron gob can go on there. So glue that on there, paint that. I do still have to figure out how to get this arm off. That one's really on there, but I did manage to get his claw to come on and off, which is good. So I now have two claws that are ready to go. Um, yeah, see how much of this unit you know, I could save, basically. So it's always a good idea to paint the inside of these iron gobs before you glue them on because you really can't get in there otherwise. Also painting the faces before you glue them on. I like to just throw some lead belts in there because they're metal. They're not going to paint the inside. They're orcs. So bada boom bada bing. I'll we'll go ahead and give the outside of it a good coat of lead belcher as well because that's what I like to use as the base on my orc metals and then I put my rust effects on there and my highlights and whatnot but um, I like having more metal and less paint on my orcs and then the paint are kind of like stripes and checks and dags and flames and things like that because I think the orcs would just get kind of too bored before really painting much of anything unless they had the grots do it. All right. All right, so I did some more digging in the index and the old codexes to kind of get a better idea of uh, the mega knobs and kind of what kind of stuff they're supposed to have on them uh, and like maybe get an idea for future proofing right for when the codex comes out. So the twin kill saws has always been a thing. 
Um, at one point they were really, really good. Now they're just twin linked, but you know what? They're still a thing and they're good. And they've been a thing ever since the Mega Dobbs came out. So sticking with these are gonna be fine. They're gonna be future proof. But one thing that I did notice is that the leader changes, uh, you know, kind of what happens with the squad. So uh, the war boss here in the Mega Armor, when, uh, when you attach him to the Mega Dobbs squad, any reroll or any uh, misses uh, to hit of one for close combat get rerolled. So pairing him with the close combat focused uh, Mega Knobs is a great idea. So I happen to have out of my squad of five, I had three that have twin saws. Uh, so I'm gonna leave all these together. So um, I glued the ones that were busted. Um, they are all back together. This squad is done and dusted and now they will be led by the war boss in Mega Armor. Uh, Cause again, they'll reroll ones. Uh, to hit and then because they're twin linked saws you know they get to reroll the wounds it'll be a super awesome squad what i'm gonna do with the other three is they're gonna be led by old big mech here the uh big mech in mega armor who's got his claw um i'm trying to decide if i want to uh, make the claw be able to like detach and reattach and have a kill saw for him too because he can go either way um but eh, for now i'll do the claw and then he's got his custom Mega Blast. Now when he leads a unit of Mega Knobs, they get to reroll uh, misses of roll, rolls of one uh, for shooting, which is actually kind of interesting. So uh, what I ended up doing is I took my guys that had the, uh, the double uh, claws there and I cut off their other claws uh, and put the combi weapons on. I went with the combi weapons because they these all have individual profiles. Now they don't. Combi weapons now just one thing. Uh, but the custom shooter was kind of like really lame. And since he's letting them reroll the ones, you might as well go with the big gun. So I uh, got a combi weapon on this one and just got to paint up the weapon and he's good. Uh, put the combi weapon on this one and just got to paint the weapon and he's good. And then um, he's also the one that I added the big gob to. So I need to put some detailing on that uh, and then he will be good to go. And then the last one is the old metal one that I had from way back in the day. Uh, I got him fixed up now, so he now has a uh, claw arm on this side. Now this is actually the claw arm from uh, the new knobs that are in the new boy set. They're really, really beefy size, so they actually um, line up with the mega uh, armor quite well. And then again, a combi weapon on that side. Now what I'm gonna do is, uh, because this arm is bare and doesn't have a lot of armor on it like the other arms do, uh, once this kind of glue dries a little bit on it, I'm going to get some some more bits and pieces out of the uh, the old bits box here <laughs> And uh, put an armored shoulder pad on him so that that arm uh, goes with it as well and Then obviously put the boss bull on his back So a couple more bits onto him and then I can uh, base all of the weapons with the uh, uh, the lead belcher and then uh, start doing some detailing work But yeah, so I'm gonna end up with I'm gonna turn that one unit into two units uh, so now I'll have my, my shooting squad uh, that goes with the uh, Big Mac here. And then the other cool thing, he's got that custom force field, right? So the invulnerable save. And then once around, he can actually resurrect one of those guys. So if you actually manage to do two kill one of them, you just bring it back to life. Um, so I'm really excited to actually use this in a game. I have no idea how competitive it's going to be, but it sounds like a really quirky thing. Uh, but yeah, so that's, that's where we're at for now. All right, so digging through the bits, I found this piece here that I was going to use for a shoulder pad. Um, except kind of goes up on the shoulder, uh, which isn't really what the Mega Knobs do. If you look at the other ones, they're actually down a little bit and you get a flash of the green uh, where their shoulders are before the armor piece. So I think I'm gonna go with this smaller one actually Ooh. that uh, fits down here on the bicep so that you can still see that, that flash of shoulder. So I'm gonna put that one on and then I think that's it for bits and we'll get to painting. So uh, one of my favorite paints is Tamiya. Tamiya makes paints for scale modelers, but what I really like about it is it is like kind of pretty thin compared to Citadel paint right out of the pot. So you don't have to uh, you know thin it down in order to put it right on the model. It's also, as you see, significantly cheaper than Citadel and you get a lot more. Uh, this one is a uh, 23 milliliter pot uh, versus these little guys. I don't even know how much these are. 18 so you know 50% increase in size for half the price can't go wrong Try to get this in frame I haven't done a whole lot of painting on camera before so it's a bit 
kind of hard to figure out. Um, I've done one video before where I painted all the flames on my Burn Obama. Uh, if you want to check that one out, uh, you can find a link to it down in the description below, along with links for uh, some of my recommended things here. Uh, we'll have the unit of Mega Knobs, as well as the Tamiya Paint. Uh, and anything you do when you click on, um, you know, it, it doesn't change the price for you at all. Uh, so if you're going to buy it anyway, uh, you know, it'd be great because they send a little kickback to old Big Mac. Uh, so I can keep making videos like this and hopefully make them better as I uh, upgrade equipment and things like that. So, yeah, just super appreciate it if you do. And if not, that's totally cool, too. All right. So I've got a little black on there. Now, the rest of the old Big Mac here, I've dry brushed with some gray. So I'm going to let that black dry and actually do the same thing with it. Dry brush it with some gray because I want to try a different kind of painting technique on him. Uh, I've also got to do is custom Mega Blast it and his claw. All right. We got all the uh, base coating done here on the Big Mac and his gob. Uh, and got the uh, rest of the parts glued on. Man, every time I pick this thing up, it throws me through. These are all plastic. They're super light. This thing being an old metal monster, man, he's got some heft to him. You could chuck him at your opponent and, uh, yeah, that, that'd do some damage. So, anyways, these guys are uh, ready to go next. So now I'm going to grab the, uh, the lead belcher. So I don't, um, I don't paint my orcs traditionally in the way of like uh, being goths or bad moons or anything like that. They have their own thing, uh, which is actually this orange color here uh, that I use on all of them uh, to tie them together. But I make each squad kind of really unique and haphazard because uh, I, I like the idea better, you know, the lore accurate of, you know, orcs are just orcs and they're kind of all over the place and, you know, they'll... Which boss they'll follow will change with the whimsy or whoever boss is bigger or fight is better or whatnot, you know, so they're not going to have a whole lot of identifying markings. And then the uh, the other thing is I don't use a whole lot of rust on mine, and, and there's a reason for that. So in real life, metal gets rusty when it is left alone, when it's just outside in the elements, rotting and rusting. When you're dealing with scrap, when you're welding things together and banging around and going to war, it actually gets really chipped up and glossy like this uh, because it's it's getting banged around. Even rust can get banged off of it. There's not a whole lot of rust. So works aren't one for sitting still. And uh, ergo, there's not a whole lot of time for any rust to develop on anything. So I'll, I'll put a little bit here and there and make it look like maybe they welded a rusty piece onto something. Uh, but especially on the guys themselves, um, not much rust at all because, uh, yeah, I, I don't think it would actually have a chance to do it. And I like the, uh, I like the freshly assembled aesthetic, I should say. <laughs> all right, we are all done with the uh, lead belchel base coating. So there's... One combi weapon and the iron gob done and ready. Uh, this one's got his combi weapon ready. And then the big heavy one, which you gotta remember. Oh, I <laughs> uh, got the combi weapon, uh, the boss pole, and the claw going along with the shoulder pad. Now, I need to do his skin next. Now, his skin looks different than their skin, and that's okay. Uh, my whole orc army, you'll actually notice none of the skin looks the same. Um, I do that on purpose. Orcs are mushrooms, right? And they are going to all be slightly different shades, so I don't have a recipe, so to say. I just grab whatever random greens I have laying around, mix them together, highlight them, make them look whatever is cool. This one I am going to try to match his skin tone, just because his face is already done and is actually done pretty well. So all I really need to do is put in that, that bicep and kind of that line of shoulder on both shoulders. Uh, so I'm gonna do that up with mine. I think probably gonna start with the the moot green That looks about the closest to an analog to what I did back in the day And if I have to I can always throw a wash on his face or something to, to really get it to match All right, like I thought that was actually a pretty decent match the moot greens a little bit brighter than his skin tone uh, And that's okay. What I ended up doing was uh, Doing just a little bit of a highlight on the top of the skin and then also that gives me a chance to put a wash 
uh, for definition on his muscles and it should come out matching pretty well. All right, some time has passed by, some life has happened, but you know, in and out of the uh, work area as you can, and that's how real life painting an army goes. You work when you can, and uh, yeah, <laughs> you can always film it. Anyways, uh, uh, did get a little bit further, so I got the lead belcher uh, base coat on all of the uh, weapons, and then you can see I did put a null oil wash on them, so they're they're starting to come around to match uh, the rest of the figure. Uh, same with this one here. And then this guy is really coming along. So uh, again, had done the base coat on his skin there with the uh, the moot green. Um, I did do a wash of uh, I think it's croak, uh, yeah, croak green. A little wash on that just to put some definition in there. Um, and then yeah, same thing. Did the lead belcher on all the steel with a null oil wash, and um, started working on his base a little bit with my base coat. Uh, color down there to get prepared for all the basic materials next on them is going to be the signature color for my army The only thing that all of my squads have in common is this particular orange. This is Tamiya x6 orange There's nothing like it in the G dub palette and it really pops on the table and so it, it uh, It makes the army even though it's this big smorgasbord army That's all sorts of different things really kind of tie together be cohesive because every single unit has a spot of orange um, so yeah, you could see on the, the ones that were already partially finished, there's like little orange panels on their uh, weapons and on their iron gob, uh, a lot of times on the boss poles and things like that. So we're going to add some orange um, to these weapons now, to the to the um, combi weapons, and then also everywhere on this guy. And then same thing with uh, Old Big Mac here. So Old Big Mac here, I'm doing kind of a slap choppish style on him. Um, only instead of like Zenithal spray, I did the, the dry brush method. Um, but I'm not going to do all of them like that. So what I did is I've done a couple of um, orcs, not for my army, but for other things where I sprayed them black. I dry brushed them with a light gray. I used a contrast on their skin. So that would be I mean, like Creed Camo or Orc Flesh or you know, the other greens. Um, and then I would go in and um, use a regular metal paint on all the metals and not um, you know like a, a contrast or something like just let them be true metallic um, and then hit them with a little bit of shade here and there for some some rust effects and things like that and turned out pretty cool looking and I think uh, on the Big Mac here since he can't really work on himself the way he works on everybody else um, that it's gonna show him off being a little different stuff so that, that's the idea with him but he's gonna get some orange first and again that's all with the Timmy X6 so that's where I am now to say one thing I do really enjoy is the uh, army painter brushes um, the tips aren't the greatest the, they're not my, my favorite there I've got some um, other like artist brushes that I like better but the the thicker triangle handle actually works really well for me uh, old Big Mac has some nerve issues um, and being able to hold things is kind of hard that's why you see uh, I got knurled handles and all my things uh, but yeah, the, these brushes just kind of work better for me. So if you're somebody like me that um, you know might have some nerve issues, uh, definitely think about something like this. It's a lot more comfy. I also have my uh, little foamy thingy here when I'm painting for any kind of a period of time. Uh, it gives me something to rest my wrist on uh, so that I don't uh, affect them any worse than they are. So yeah. anyways, we'll, uh, we'll get to doing some orange in here. So generally what I like to do, as you can see on the, the close combat weapons and stuff, I like to put like random panels to make it look like uh, whatever big mech built all these crazy contraptions um, kind of put his own flair on it or like that. Uh, it's like his his brand, right? So I, I try to find cool little pieces to pick out on the weapons that are something he would do. Let's see, like him, he's got the top of his claw, so I might do the top of his blaster as well. Now, I don't do a perfect coat with this on purpose. I am going to age this paint as part of my painting process, and so by leaving it not quite perfect and having some chips and stuff showing through underneath, it actually helps make those layers of um, detail really pop and, you know, read as on purpose. Again, you could see on his, his finished claw here, there's spots where there's the darker silver through, there's spots where there's the brighter silver. Uh, and it just kind of gives this overall effect of, of like having been painted recently, but then being worn since then.
All right, so there is the big mech himself. Uh, got a little bit more orange on him than most because, again, that's that's going to be kind of his color, his thing. I might even come back and do a little more on it. I don't know. I've got to sit and think on this one uh, for a little bit, but definitely got the squad going. Very happy with uh, how they are turning out, how they're looking. Um, yeah, so just about done with the the mega knobs now and uh, that'll be the first unit completed uh, for the army and just like that it's another day even again getting your army done it's about working when you can where you can we've all got things going on whether it's working raising a family going to university all three whatever the case may be it's all good it the whole thing about october is just working on it every day whether it's 10 minutes or 10 hours putting that work in that's what's going to get those results so here's what i've done off camera since then uh show you all the guys so this is the uh the one the metal one uh you can see i've got some detailing on some wires there i got some of the gold on there uh, a couple of the things he's actually getting really really close uh same with these uh updating the uh, the weapons that we added to him got some some checks going on that one and uh this one's just got couple little missile pods on it and then the big mech uh, he's starting to get some some details going on him as well so my plan of action is uh, I'm gonna finish the squad tonight um, they're really close uh, I got to do the heads of the missiles on that one a uh, little bit of silver detailing and some weathering um, and then they're done this guy does need his basing because he just has the, the plain paint. These guys are actually based already with the uh, the mud and the tufts. Um, I'm going to save that. The basing, the material that I use is an acrylic. It dries out if you leave the lid off and stuff. So I like to save till I got a couple of bases to do and then kind of do them all at the same time. So I've got a, I've got a killer can here that fell off. I could show you a base, get that nice texture on there. Uh, but yeah, so I'll do a video just on basing when I get to that point. But, you know, I'm still going to be able to call them done. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to cut straight on finishing this squad. And then if I still have time, I will attack the Big Mac. So here it goes. Let's get our first squad for Orktober completed. So again, I'm going for a rougher texture on purpose. I'm going for not full coverage, not even coverage. And the reason for that is I heavily weather all of my orcs. And when you're already covering everything up with weathering, it doesn't make sense to uh, do a super clean paint style like I would do with my uh, Eldari, for example. So uh, again, purposefully leaving um, some bare metal on there, purposefully making it streaky and splotchy, um, and then we're going to be adding the uh, the silver detailing like that to make it look all scratched up. But got some red on there for those missiles, looking mighty nice. Uh, this one I did an orange tip on, so it is already ready to go. I think I am going to make like a big old button here or something. That looks like it should be red, right? Yeah, you know. <laughs> it's whatever uh, whatever feels right to you just like uh, an orc would do that's all you gotta do is whatever an orc would do let's see yeah I'm not seeing really anything on there I want red so that will take care of our red so a trick that I do through my whole orc army you see all my lenses like that uh, they are a kind of glossy blue uh, almost translucent and that is the uh, Tamiya clear blue I really like the Tamiya clears for this kind of stuff it makes it look like glass uh, makes it look um, really proper and one of the things that you'll see actually in all of my armies and all of my painting is a mixture of uh, flat and matte and gloss uh, textures and that is on purpose because real life you know we're not all matte right like there's a certain amount of, of sheen to my skin, you know, and then the watch is much shinier, right? This is glossy. So if you have glossy metal and flat skin on your model, it's going to look much more realistic than being all flat. So uh, you will see me use actually gloss paints quite a bit. Um, Semi-gloss, flat, matte, um, really mix those up. But yeah, so the, the clear 
clear selection. That's what you want for any kind of uh, lens or eyewear or you know, targeting reticule or whatever. Uh, so like for example here on the Big Mac. And ideally you want to put it over um, some, some nice silver or white uh, depending on how bright you want it to be. The other thing I like to do is if you where you pull off the brush is going to be darkest. And so if you want to have a little bit of a specular spot, kind of aim where you want that to be to pull off and have a little bit of a darker spot there for it. So yeah, that's my uh, that's my targeting rectangle on the Big Mac. All right, we are to the most critical step when it comes to my particular paint scheme, and that is the silver. Uh, we use this for the chipping and for the edges, uh, any kind of hard highlights on the true metallic metal. And for that, I don't actually like any of the Games Workshop stuff. Again, my go-to is a Tamiya. This is Tamiya X11 Chrome Silver. This is a true metallic metal uh, silver. It's a very uh, nice and bright silver, but even this, I only use for certain things. My uh, When I do the actual chipping, what I use is super old school Tester's Enamel uh, Chrome Silver. And again, this stuff is gnarly. You gotta use, um, the uh, enamel thinner with it uh, to clean your brushes and stuff. You really want a brush that's dedicated just for this stuff. But if you want bright honking silver that is metal and looks like it, uh, this is this is what you want. Again, old Big Mac with his tools here to actually be able to paint and do things. <laughs> but yeah, that is that's the ticket right there. So this is what we're gonna use on these guys right now. Let me. Switch up the brush here. So that was not the one I use. Now these old testers enamels, they're very opaque. So they have no translucency to them if you've shook them well enough. Uh, so keep that in mind when you're using them. Uh, you really want to be careful. Make sure you're putting it where you want it. Um, yeah. That being said, they do dry brush excellently. If you could dry brush correctly with these, boy, do they, do they like to pop. Now this is where the fun comes in on dotting all the little rivets and scratching all the little scratches to make everything look right proper. And now for the dirty secret to my uh, weathering technique here that gets me all of that lovely chipping that you see and that is sponge. You get some nice uh, closed cell foam and you dip it in the chrome and then you use that to make your weathering and you end up with like that. So when you first get it on the sponge it's going to be pretty thick. It's not going to really um, put that kind of a pattern on so you want to put it where it's going to be uh, thickest and most worn so like inside the claw snaps is always good um, I tend to do the top and the back and the sides of the uh, bus pole anywhere where the fist is the end of the weapons the feet, the feet typically get pretty chipped up. So 
So basically you can control just how much weathering you want by how often you chip and how much you press down. Um, if you have any kind of wear patterns, there, there are areas that are going to be worn more. You can kind of hit it more. All right, and just like that, the weathering of this entire model is done. All right, and we are in the home stretch now. Uh, these two guys are actually completely finished. Their weapons have been added on and painted and detailed and weathered, and now matches the rest of them. This guy we fixed his iron gob, so we have two of our unit ready. Metal guy here, again, we'll do the basing later. Uh, but other than that, he is all done, except for, you notice he doesn't have any blood on his claw like these guys do. Now for that, I use the Contrast Flusters Red with this absolutely knackered brush. Uh, and that is on purpose, because the contrast is actually really bad for brushes. But also, it allows me to um, paint wrongly, I guess you could say, to make it look more like um, blood and splatter and yeah and just kind of random patterns splotches kind of stipple in there and boom he's done our squad is finished and of course, we started out this whole thing with old Big Mech here, uh, who's looking just about done. I want to do a little bit of work to his uh, custom force field uh, before gluing on his iron gob and calling him done. And for that, I'm going to use the uh, Pilar Glacier. I think I'm pretty happy with that. And just like that, the big mech in mega armor is complete as well. And so with that, we have actually tackled the first of our squads and uh, gotten some stuff painted for our WOG. I gotta say, I'm really super happy about how this turned out. It was a process, it was a couple of days, but you know what? I took a squad that wasn't really legal um, and frankly needed a little bit of repairs and, and wasn't all that uh, happy with it to start with 
and got it looking nice. So we now have that squad of three with the double kill saws going with the uh, war boss and mega armor. So we've made a squad that actually works in the game. And now we have this awesome squad of mega knobs that have the claw and a weapon, a combi weapon instead of two claws, which isn't legal. Uh, so we now have three of those and we got handsome fella himself good old Big Mac and Mega Armor. So now old Big Mac finally has another old Big Mac besides the one with the shock attack gun uh, to lead the army. And uh, yeah, that is really right proper and awesome. So yeah, two units down and uh, we'll see what we paint next. So thanks everyone for uh, being with me here this October and sticking through this real long one. Let me know what kind of format videos you like. We've now done a couple of different videos and different styles. Uh, which ones do you like seeing? And uh, what units do you want to see next? Uh, let me know down in the comments below where you'll also find the affiliate links to uh, some of the products I talked about today. So until next time, log on!